Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Chris, for, for doing that. Um, I would remind you that one of the golden rules of cross-examination in a court is never ask a question to which you might not like the answer. So I'm just hoping that turns out all right at the, at the end of the evening. Um, well, good evening, everybody. Um, buonasera for those in Italy. Um, I won't run through good evening in all the other 14 countries, but um, I think you'll get the message. And just really delighted to be um, addressing this senior audience of business leaders, um, it, both here and in our embassies across, across Europe. And this evening's event, our European Green Investment Summit, um, is really a major milestone in the build-up to our own Global Investment Summit, um, which we're holding in a couple of weeks' time. I'll talk more about that later, and to COP26. And I really believe this is a, a crucial moment to harness your expertise to enhance the business environment for future net zero investments, green supply chains, and to address collaboration needs. Now, we heard earlier from my very good friend, Alex Sharma, about the vital role that businesses have to play in mitigating climate change. And very interestingly, Alex's job um, before he took on this role, he was the UK's business secretary. So he speaks about this from the perception of, of, of business. And I do think we are in one of those rare occasions where we have a, a clear juxtaposition between the needs of the world and the opportunities that are available for business. And I'll, I'll come back to that um, a bit later. And, and this is why, because I mean, absolutely clearly, and we can debate timescales, but the global economy of the future is going to be a low carbon economy. And that means that green investment, this isn't a, a flash in the pan. This isn't a, a marketing initiative. It's here to stay and it makes good, good financial sense. Now, let's not, let's not forget that already 191 countries agreed to decarbonize their economies under the Paris Agreement. And we expect to take this further and to move it from general commitments to very, very specific commitments going forward when we meet together in Glasgow in a few weeks, in a few weeks time. And I think that as countries make that transition, also not just in terms of investment, but we are going to see that global trade in low carbon goods and, and services will also be a rapidly growing sector. And it's very pleasing to me as the UK's Minister for Investment, that the UK is at the forefront of that global effort. We were the first global economy to legislate that we must meet by law zero emissions by, by, 20, by 2050. Now, for example, let's be very specific. We are committed to ending the sale of new petrol and diesel cars in the UK by 2030. So far this year, one in seven of all cars sold in the UK have had a plug attached to them. And this has not been driven by the manufacturers. This has been driven by clear consumer demand. And we are, we are at the forefront of encouraging investment in, in renewables, in electricity, electric motors, low emission vehicles and, and batteries. And we're putting money behind this. You know, for example, we've launched a, a one billion pound clean growth focused innovation portfolio, investing in floating offshore, which is going to be a major, major industry going forward. Hydrogen, energy storage, batteries and biomass. And we've set out in a recent white paper, our policy, government policy papers, how we are going to transform the energy system 
And this will provide, as I said earlier, considerable opportunities for, for, for investment. Now, I think this makes us a fantastic global investment destination. Now, the way I see this is, you go back to the 19th century, the first industrial revolution was created in the United Kingdom and it was based on innovation and what else? Coal, coal and carbon. The second industrial revolution, 150 years later, rather nicely and symmetrically, is being based on the removal of carbon from our, our economy. And my profound belief is that the opportunities in this second industrial revolution are, just, are going to be just as great as the, as the opportunities that we found in the, first, in the first industrial revolution. And of course, there's many, many aspects to this and a little bit of you know, advertisement. It's not just the opportunities who are in the UK, but in fact is our open and liberal economy, our flexible labor market, our business friendly environment, and our corporation tax rates do actually make it a great place to locate, to locate an, an investment. Now, in order to you know, capitalize on this, um, as you heard, we'll be holding shortly our Global Investment Summit. Now, as the Minister for Investment, um, I like the spirit of friendly competition that we see with our, our friends across Europe in this. But I'm really hoping that when my, our great friend, President Macron, rolls out, talks about rolling out the red carpet for investors, the fact that we're going to be rolling out the green carpet for investors in a three weeks time is going to be a, is going to be a killer, is going to be a killer punch. So we have very, very ambitious targets. Um, we, we are, you know, we expect our total investment in research and development, for example, to amount to 2.4% of UK GDP, because you can't make this transition unless you are a, a science power. And we absolutely intend the UK to retain its, its position as one of the global, as global science powers. And this goes belong beyond green energy to, to tech. Um, we recently had a, a very successful London Tech Week. Um, the Prime Minister and I launched at the end of last year our Office for Investment based in 10 Downing Street. And this gives a bespoke service to major investors, such as we have on this call tonight, who are looking to invest in the UK or want some help in removing barriers to, to, to investment. Our intention is that this green industrial revolution, which we are going to spearhead by 12 billion pounds of government investment, will mobilize at least three times as much private investment. Indeed, I'm seeing in some sectors that we'll now be able to, we'll now be able to leverage our investment five times, six times by private investment because of the opportunities that we see. And we believe, and I think this is critical for the health of our economy and for others, this will support up to a quarter of a million new jobs in the, in the, in the UK. So thank you very much for coming along this evening. I mean, what I can assure you is that we have, you will have strong policy support if you come to the UK. Um, attractive returns. We're not saying this is something that you have to do, you know, for, for other than commercial motives. Though of course, the other motives are certainly there and are right up there. An absolute an indicator of strong potential growth in the, in the UK. And I make happy to say that my government is unapologetic about backing further European investment, about working in close collaboration with our, our European friends who we have on the call, call this evening and trying to bring together our, our skills and expertise to collaborate in this, in this, in this vital endeavor. So let's create this ambitious decarbonisation programme. Let it benefit investors, 
not just in the UK, but throughout Europe. Let the techniques and the innovation that we drive from this benefit all our countries. Because if we do that, we're going to make a reality of, of COP26. We're going to chart a path to a, a cleaner, greener future. And I do believe that we will be leaving our planet in a better state for future generations. And at the end of the day, what is more important than that? Thank you all very much.